Okay, guys, thanks for your help. I appreciate the company. I think I got it from here. I think I'm just about ready to start. I, I hope they like it. Something a little different. All right, wish me luck. Thanks. Hey, welcome back. Riggs here, and I do have something a little different today. I have a base design that uh, I've just kind of come up with the, the layout for it, and I want to show you around briefly and then show you where I found the design, and then we can get into a little bit more of the kind of design decisions. But yeah, it's a basic kind of castle keep where you walk in, you have a few different rooms that you could put all kinds of different projects in. Let me get into uh, uh, spectator mode so I can zoom around a little easier. But yeah, kind of a common room here and then a much larger room on the top floor. But let me show you uh, a little bit more of the, the details in a second, but I want to show you where I found the design because, you know, inspiration in Minecraft comes from all different places. You always have to kind of keep your eyes open and take uh, you know inspiration where it comes. So let me show you where I found this one. All right This is gonna get a little weird, but just stay tuned. Okay, hang on Yeah, so very quickly you can tell the podzol looks very different and There's a reason for that uh, We are in a different game. Yep World of Warcraft classic launched recently uh, It's a 15 year old game and I played this game 15 years ago, so I was tempted to jump back in and I was, you know, <laughs> I've, I've been distracted by a bunch of different games uh, over the last few years. I've been playing Minecraft for, I guess, eight years now. And uh, every now and then you get kind of distracted away from it um, for a moment or two. But I was walking around this base and I was like, this is a really nice little layout. You know, if this was a Minecraft base, you could have uh, your enchanting room in here. You could have uh, maybe some bulk storage down here, you know, a basement down to, uh, to some mines, and then up here you have a little balcony. This is kind of what I was just showing you. Um, and then this leads up to the, the ceiling, but then up here you have the main common room, and this could be kind of your your main, um, you know, your, your, your big storage room. And uh, depending on what kind of base you want to have, um, it could be either very functional base with farms and different little tucked away farms, or just kind of a story base, you know, kind of castle. Uh, you know, for your kingdom. Um, and so this stairway goes up to the, the ceiling where you have the ceiling, the roof, where you have a little lookout point and kind of a sloped roof. Um, but let me show you what I've done uh, in Minecraft and then we can maybe come back here and take a take another look around. Okay, and back in Minecraft, here's looking at the roof of my base and I've not tried to replicate it exactly. I just really liked the flow of the space. And uh, by the way, this is exactly four chunks. I was recently playing on a server where you could only reserve a certain number of chunks. And this is exactly a four chunk base. And I'm um, keeping to those restrictions. I kind of made the towers a little more square and flat than I might normally do. But if you're not concerned with those constraints, don't even worry about it. But it actually really was useful for measuring things. Um, I recommend using this because each of these little squares is two blocks. So anyway, it helps. Try it out. All right, I wanted to give you a quick overhead view in case you want to build this yourself. You can count the blocks. And F3G gives you the chunk borders, uh, which again is useful for measuring. But uh, if you don't care about the chunk borders, um, you can always bump the walls out a little bit and give it a more interesting shape. Um, I don't know, I was thinking you could even go out like 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 this, something like that, uh, make it a little more, a little pokey. Um, I don't know. What do you think? That's eh, kind of cool. Uh, or you could come down here and add a little bit more structure, just a little bit more detail, um, more interesting shape to the wall. Uh, gives it a bit more structure. I haven't tried to finish out all the details. I was just more interested in the layout because I think it has a nice flow. All right, come on in. I'll show you around. But first, I want to show you some details. I hope at some point you see something that you'll say, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but some of the details here for the entrance, I used stone and andesite stairs, which give you kind of a nice little snake pattern. And then these walls give a nice, nice little peek through for any guards that might be stationed in there. And then the main door is not a door. It's all trap doors, but gives a, a sort of illusion of a big open doorway and a tall doorway, I think, gives a nice feeling of space. And then one other thing is I did the uh, these lanterns in kind of a, a triangle going back, which gives a little bit more of an illusion of space uh, receding into the distance there. And just to clarify that last point, I wanted to use the F3G again, because these are parallel lines, right? The yellow lines are never going to meet, but they appear like they're all going to meet in a point at the top. And so that's called a disappearing point. And so if you have things in a triangle kind of like this, 
it kind of makes it look like they are receding back further into the distance than they actually are. At least that's the idea. What do you think? All right, we can take a look around on foot and give you a sense of what it'll feel like in survival. The first thing is that, you know, as soon as you come in, you're given a choice. So there's like something to explore already rather than just being plopped in the main room of, of your base. But you go around, there's four main rooms on the ground floor. And then in here, there's like a common room uh, with the basement going downstairs to maybe your mines or whatever. Um, but, you know, a as always, form will follow function. So, you know, depending on what you need this base to be, you know, maybe you already have a main base and you don't need to have bamboo farms and, and all that stuff. But if you do, you have four main rooms on the ground floor. You could have bamboo and kelp and uh, cactus and then maybe vi you know, vi villagers on the second floor doing farming um, or maybe this is just a sort of a story castle and you have uh, the the main throne room up here and you have all the various other things going on downstairs like uh, maybe there's a, a hospital in this room and there's the uh, supply room in here maybe this is the uh, the kitchen or the guard room over here I did add a nice little detail here for the if this is the guard room and they're you know peeking out at the invaders here let me do this uh, yeah, you can peek out and maybe shoot your arrow through there. Uh, and then you have this quick up to the, the guard tower escape hatch. Um, so kind of some fun little details. And again, depending on what you need this base to be is going to affect a lot of your design decisions, of course. All right, here's a quick view of the stairs. And I've used alternating blocks, so you should be able to count uh, how many layers there are between the first floor and the second floor and then this uh, second floor hallway is just directly above the first floor's hallway so they're kind of aligned that way and that gives you some extra space over here if you want to have an extra tall entrance hallway you can do that or you could just push that across and have like another little room in here one thing I always recommend is having tall ceilings and you know style wise this just gives you a better feeling of space oh hey buddy um, you know, if you have three high ceilings, that just feels cramped to me anyway. Uh, so having taller ceilings just gives you more feeling of space. It also allows you to have some detail on the ceiling or on the floor up above. You know, if you want to have some lighting on the floor, uh, you don't want to have showing beneath or vice versa. Um, you know, having taller ceilings allows you to do that. And then tall ceilings from a functional standpoint, you know, if you have farms or redstone going on in here, having some extra room in between your floors for item transport or maybe redstone, uh, you know, if you, uh, let's say you, you fly in here, that's why I left the window open, uh, you have a chest here for an input to a uh, sorting system. And then down here you have, you know, a, a high enough ceiling for this room. So you still feel like you have some space, but then you have a, a whole other room going on in here you still with me all right we're getting into some of the secret stuff uh, behind this nice spruce paneling i have hidden a ladder so you can get up to the the second floor here and you know not necessarily the most functional you could have the the water uh column like i had in the corner there but you know if this is the throne room and there's all kinds of kingly things going on and secret meetings and whatnot you probably have somebody working in the castle who is actually a spy <laughs> and so you have a secret uh doorway when well, you know whenever you see a painting you gotta expect to see a secret door right uh, and then up here you have this little crawl space and i am i literally have to you know i'm like crouching um so it's this little secret area and you can sneak through here and then peek out at the throne room through these little little hidey holes and so I thought that was kind of a fun little detail and that's you know one of the other functions of having a tall enough ceiling to be able to hide this stuff away without it being super noticeable and then once again of course there's a painting so you kind of have to expect to be able to walk through it if you're going to use paintings to hide secret doors you have to have more paintings around than just where those secret doors are uh, but I thought that was kind of a fun little detail I wanted to show you and then of course using this uh trapdoor thing you could <laughs> swim your way through a one high crawl space which still makes me laugh just feels so goofy hi <laughs> but that gives you a nice view looking through to the throne room so you can overhear all the secret stuff 
and of course you'll want your base to be well defended, right? So above the entrance you could have a little redstone set up like this with a dispenser filled with some arrows and an observer. If you wanted to have it single fire, you could have just a note block there, and every time you punch the note block it would shoot an arrow. But if you want to have it be automatic, have two observers facing each other with a sticky piston ready to put them right in front of each other. They activate each other back and forth, which sends a repeating signal to this uh, dispenser, which is quite a welcome, depending on who your visitor is. And then I think we should be able to add, hmm, let's see, now I do it this way, do that and then that. And then if I do this, let's see, will that work? Yeah, let's see if that works now. Oh, let's see, there we go, fire arrows. Aha, even better. All right, here we are back in the world of Warcraft for a second to get some more uh, design ideas, but uh, been hanging out with my old hunter, the mighty Blackthorn, wielding his elven bow, Rockdalar. Um, actually, I don't know if it's elven, but it's definitely growing flowers and mushrooms and stuff, so um, that's probably elven, right? But uh, nice colorful roofs, and uh, yeah, always a good place to add some color. And let's just look at some of the design choices they'd use. We can get some ideas, hopefully. So, you know, these kind of a semblance of a column, it's not actually sticking out, but just a different texture there gives a feeling of some tech of uh, some structure and like little studs and we have some like teeth kind of going along. There's kind of a focal point over the entrance, kind of nice. So uh, yeah, we can bring some of those ideas into Minecraft and you know, it's useful to take a look at some of the other games that are out there. There's, you know, all these very talented artists who are building these worlds and these these uh, amazing structures that you can kind of take inspiration from and some style choices. And then of course, this is a classic kind of wood cross beam, but uh, yeah, let's go back into the world and just into the world of Minecraft. World of Minecraft, that'd be a great game. So using what we just saw there, we can use the difference between a smooth texture and something with a pattern to kind of give the illusion of some depth there. It kind of looks like this is sticking out a little bit. And then you can even use that kind of trick in a column to make it look like that as a, more of a support buttress or something like that. And then if you wanted to you know, have that next to, yes, some cobble, you could do that. It kind of looks like it's an intentional thing or even, I don't know what this is going to look like, but let's see if we did that. You can kind of give a little bit more depth uh, without actually having anything stick out. So that kind of looks like more of a support beam like that. And then using the uh, same kind of half stairs uh, stacked up, this kind of gives the appearance of windows like we saw. Um, kind of neat. And then this is uh, kind of the teeth <laughs> and the studs that we saw. You know, buttons are always a nice detail. You can add them. Uh, I don't know, sometimes maybe I've done overdone it a little bit, but you can also use the wood types as well, like I did up there. So yeah, just some details I sort of picked up from the original build to bring in over here. Are you still with me? <laughs> I know it's something a little different today. Uh, it's not a not a seed. It's not a snapshot. It's not really survival, although it will be. I'm going to build this in my survival world, which I'm I have been working on. I uh, just haven't really found a good time to be recording. But um, I hope you have found something useful in this last uh, 10 minutes or so. I know it's a uh, kind of something a little different, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and um, I think if you if you want to build it yourself, I, I hope that you've seen enough that there's nothing too tricky. I'd be happy to let you know about any of the exact spacing, but it's just kind of the general idea. There's lots of uh, flexibility in the design. If you want more or less room um, for for one room, you can always push out the walls. Um, but anyway, I think I will. I, I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, but I hope you guys are doing great, and uh, I will be back soon with with more good stuff. So. Hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, it's been Riggs. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. What's that? How'd it go? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll we'll find out, but I totally forgot to show them this one chunk version I did, um, but uh, I guess if they're interested enough, I could show it to them later. But yeah, basically the same design, just a little smaller, but you know, if you have just one chunk to work with, they might find it useful, uh, I guess. I don't know. You think what? What's I? I could show it to them at the end. Well, I doubt anyone's still watching, but I guess.